Hi and welcome to introduction of Apache Spark. My name is Nishant Garg and I will be your trainer for this video. In the last section of videos, we discussed about Spark component architecture and then explained the Spark execution flow. We also looked at the Spark context and explained the concept of resilient distributed datasets called RDD. Last, we talked about caching in Spark and the different set of transformations and actions that can be performed on resilient datasets. In this section of videos, we would be talking about more advanced topics of Spark programming such as loading and saving data from different data sources, managing key value pairs and the operations on key value pairs, accumulators, etc. And last, we would also write a Spark application and execute it on Hadoop cluster. Now we move on to the first video of this section, loading and saving data in Spark. So far, our examples have loaded and saved all of their data from native collections and regular files, but odds are that our data doesn't fit on a single machine. So it's time to explore other options for loading the data from the different data sources and saving it back. The number of data sources we are referring here are different type of files, file system and databases. Spark makes it very simple to load and save data in a large number of file formats. Now these formats starts for unstructured data sources like text file. Loading a text file is very simple as calling the text file function on our Spark context with the path to the file as you can see in this example. Now if we have a file readme.md present on SDFS which is a default file system for Spark, it will load a file and create the RTDs. We can just use the same text file method and pass it a directory and it will load all the parts into our RTD. So in case we have a directory named sales data. It would load all the files present in this directory. Sometimes it is important to know which piece of input come from which file such as sales data with a key in a file. We need to process the entire file at a time. If our files are small enough, then we can use the method whole text files. Text files method to get back a pair of RDDs where key is the name of the input file. Similarly, we can save the output to the text file as using the method save as text file, passing the argument the output. Next, semi-structured data sources like JSON files are a very popular data format. When we want to load data from JSON files, we should first load it as a text file and then mapping over the values with the preferred JSON parser to get the data. Most of the times we use JSON files with Spark SQL. So here if we use the Spark SQL, assuming we have a file employee.json on our local file system, you can see the contents of this file as different employee details. So here we are loading the employee.json from the local file system. Spark SQL can automatically capture the schema for JSON datasets and load it as data frames. This conversion can be done using Spark SQL context dot read dot JSON, the method that we have used on either an RDD of a string or a JSON file as we have used it. If we write it would actually print the schema that it has created for the JSON file and shows the data being loaded. We would be learning Spark SQL in the next volume. Writing out JSON file is much sim simpler compared to loading it because we don't have to worry about incorrectly formatted data as we know the type of the data we are writing out. We take our RDD of the structured data and convert it into an RDD of strings, which we can then write out using Spark text file API. Next in structured data sources, examples are CSV files, sequence files, protocol buffers, and object files. Comma separated values CSV files are supposed to contain the fixed number of fields per line and the fields are separated by delimiters such as comma, tab, etc. As per the code, we loaded the CSV file as a normal text file and then apply map functions 
to read each line of the file using CSV reader. Here as per the code we load the CSV file as a normal text file and when then we map over this map function to read the each line and then we apply map function to read each line of the file using CSV reader. In CSVs we don't output the field names with each record. We have a consistent output we need to create a mapping. One of the easy way to do this is to just write a function that converts the field to a given positions in an array. Next structured data source is sequence file. Sequence files are a popular Hadoop format composed of flat files with the key value pairs. Sequence files have sync markers that allow Spark to seek to a point in the file and then desynchronize with the record boundaries. Few other structured data sources like protocol buffers and object files. Protocol buffers are first developed by Google for internal remote processor calls and have been open sourced. And the object files are completely relying on Java serialization. Let me talk a few lines about loading data from the file systems. First is local file system. While Spark support loading files from the local file system, it requires that files are available at the same path on all the nodes in your cluster. Some network file systems like NFS, AFS and MAPARS NFS layer are also exposed to the user as a regular file system. If our data is already in one of these systems, then we can put it as an input by just a specifying file path, such as If you want to load a text file from a local file system from the directory user hadoop version spark derby.log, we need to specify the file and it would actually load the file and create the RDDs. Next is Amazon S3. Amazon S3 is an increasingly popular option for storing large amount of data. S3 is especially fast when the compute nodes are located inside of Amazon EC2 but can easily have much worse performance if we have to go over the public internet. To access S3 in Spark, we need to set the Amazon access ID and keys as the environment variable, then pass a path starting with S3n to Spark's file input method. And next file system is Hadoop distributed file system. Spark and SDFS can be co-located on the same machines and Spark can take advantage of this data locality to avoid network overheads. Using Spark with SDFS is simple as specifying SDFS for your input path and output path. So here we are actually loading readme.md from SDFS path and if we specify like this, it would again specifying the loading protocol Hadoop distributed file system. So it would again load it. Spark can load data from any relational database that supports Java database connectivity JDBC including MySQL, Postgres and other database systems. To access this data, we construct an JDBC RDD and provide it with our Spark context and the other parameters. Let's see the code sample. First we provide a function to establish a connection to our database. This let each node create its own connection to load the data after performing any configuration required to connect. So here we are specifying the database URL and the driver manager connection settings for getting the connection. Next we provide a query for getting the range of data and also specify the lower bound and the upper bound parameters for this query. These parameters shows Spark to query different ranges of data on the different machines so we don't get bottleneck trying to load all the data on a single machine. The last parameter is a function that converts each row of output from result set to a format that is useful for manipulating our data. Therefore, we will get int and string pair in this case because we are converting the first field to the integer and second to the string. If this parameter is left out, Spark will automatically convert each row to an array of objects. Next is the connectors. With Spark, we can also use connectors provided by different vendors such as connector for Cassandra, Elasticsearch, MongoDB, etc. Apache Spark also provides the Hadoop input format implementation for accessing HBase.
In this video, we have looked at the different data sources such as multiple file formats, file systems and databases from which data can be loaded into Spark. In the next video, we would be talking about key value pair datasets and the different operations that can be applied on pair datasets. Thank you.